So I thought we'd take a look at punched cards, a rather outdated concept of storing data for a computer. Now cards like this have been in use you know in the 19th century uh, they were used holograph cards were used in fairground organs and the like and other mechanical machines but these are IBM standard style cards which were introduced in 1928 I believe and they started out with this uh, 80 column span if you like and we have 10 rows here and then two value rows at the top and early uh, printing machines like this couldn't use all the available spaces so they could only print one hole and a, a hole in the value rows row so you couldn't use the entire ascii character set so for example you might have uh, this is known as row 11 up here, this is one you can't see, and this is 12. You might have a punch in row 12, and then a punch in row 1, and that would indicate uh, the letter A, for example. Or a punch in row 12, punch in row 2 for B, and so on. Uh, so you could, if you work out, you could have, what, uh, 40 combinations, which is nowhere near the full ASCII character set. And when IBM introduced uh, upper and lowercase characters, it got a bit difficult so better punches had to be introduced which could punch multiple holes and once you could start punching multiple ho holes in a column then there was obviously more data and you know cars like this were in use in the 70s even in the 80s in legacy machines and they can't hold a lot of data i mean they used to come in packs of 200 cards and if you're looking at one character per uh, column we've got 80 columns so we're looking at 80 characters per card so it's not that much data what's that one thousand what's that eight thousand characters per hundred not a lot of um data at all but it's, it's interesting to see how we've evolved from this to uh, tape mediums and discs and cds and, and that sort of medium just blows my mind how we can do that. I still think circuitry storage mediums like that must have been invented by some alien force or something. I mean this is easy to understand and this is where you need to start to pick up the principles of later uh, storage systems but even how discs work and stuff is just crazy. Absolutely boggles my mind how they spin so quickly and pick up the data. Yeah it's interesting to look at things like this and you know later on in the cards life then binary cards were used and binary cards allowed the punching devices could punch holes wherever across a single column so you could you could use the full columns allowance which allowed uh, i think two 36 bit words per column which was a massive increase in data on the card but by then things were getting it was getting a bit outmoded and it was time to replace the cards anyway but you know this is where we came from this is where our data span from there's nothing there's nothing on the back except for some holes yeah there we go they're nice to look at lovely stuff and if they're too punched you know if if you look if you look at a binary card which has got punches everywhere then they become pretty flimsy and can often get jammed in the reading machines when they're put through look at that it's like those little um, kids colouring things, isn't it? Colouring templates. Although, nothing like it at the same time. It'd be interesting to see what came out if you coloured through a few of those. Probably no gibberish. Anyway, that's punched cards. I just wanted to explore these with you. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention as well. Um, there used to be a system where, because there wasn't enough uh, variation in the punches to use all the, the entire ASCII character set. Um, there was a technique where a punch in a particular area on the card would put the system into an alternative character set, a bit like pressing a shift and using the alternative characters on your keyboard. And then this would allow the same hole after that uh, change to register as a different character to one before it. A very problem with that is if 
you started reading a card halfway through or you missed a card and subsequent readings were taken using the wrong character set you just end up with a bunch of gibberish fed into the computer which is not ideal and, you know, I find this stuff really interesting I find the history of computing and anything like this fascinating to look into so I thought I'd share it with you which I have and from that point onwards the video ends so I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.